for model number three, these are the following uh, assumptions. First, again, we assume continuous review and uniform demand. <clears throat> Next, we now assume that supply is non-instantaneous. -instant what do we mean by this? In this case, B is not infinity anymore. In fact, B is actually a positive value. If you remember our discussion on B, B is the rate at which your supplier will be able to supply you your order. For example, if you order, let's say, uh, 300 units and B is equal to 100 per day, let's say, that means your supplier will be able to fulfill your order in three days because your supplier can only uh, deliver you 100 units every day. And that is your non-instantaneous uh, supply. And then again, we bring back uh, shortages uh, are not allowed as an assumption. Again, uh, for model number three, we need to graph the inventory level against uh, time. So we have our x and y axis again. Okay. Uh, again, this is inventory level. This is time. We pick an arbitrary point, and as we go to the right, this moves down diagonally at the rate of A, which is our um, demand rate. Now, because model number, th number three assumes non-instantaneous supply, which means your supplier will not be able to deliver all of your, your ordered units Q, and your supplier will only be able to deliver at the rate of B units per unit of time and because you also have uh, a uniform demand of A, therefore at this point where you will be reordering Q, your inventory level will not, will not shoot up instantaneously but in this case will increase steadily. What is the rate at which uh, your inventory level will increase? the rate at which is b minus a. Why b minus a? Because in this case, b is the amount that your supplier will be able to deliver the rate, and a is your demand rate. And the assumption here, obviously, is that b is greater than a. Okay? So your, your inventory level will increase at the rate of b minus a up until a certain point where, and let me identify this point, I will identify a new variable called big H, no? which is very different from uh, small h. Small h is our holding cost. Big H here is the highest inventory level that we will be achieving. And uh, how will we reach this highest inventory level? We will be reaching this highest inventory level by accumulating B minus A inventory over over the period E1. Okay? Now, once we reached once we reach the, the highest inventory level because it is at this point where the the supplier was able to deliver all of your orders already, then we can slowly consume your inventory. Okay, so let me quickly fix the graph a bit. So in this case, we will identify this part of the graph to be T2. So again, what is T1? T1 is the time when your supplier is still delivering uh, units no, to you. T2 is the time when you were able to reach this point already and your supplier is not delivering anymore and all you're doing right now is consuming or selling. No? And that is why your inventory level is starting to decrease at this point. Again, we will be uh, getting the total cost function per cycle again. Um, in this case, we will be uh, getting the total cost function in terms of the variable Q. 
the variable h, this h, um, t1, t2, and t. These are all your variables. <clears throat> and this is equal to what? Again, remember this is your total cost per cycle divided by the cycle time, which is t. So your total cost per cycle is still k, your fixed cost plus your CQ, which is still your variable cost, plus the holding cost multiplied by the amount of inventory you are holding for the entire cycle. And again, uh, because the graph is a triangle, all we have to do is get the area of the triangle and multiply that with H. So that's one half base times height. And then we divide everything by T. Okay? Now, um, we will be able to reduce our variables down to a single variable Q by substituting uh, H, T, and T1, and T2. Okay? So what do we know about the other variables? First, what is T1 equal to? T1 by definition is the time when your suppliers are still delivering. And therefore, it is your order quantity Q divided by the supply rate. Meaning, if you are ordering 300 units and the supplier can deliver at a rate of 100 units per day, then T1 is 3 days. Okay? However, T1 is also equal to your H, your highest inventory level, no? your highest inventory level, divided by the rate at which you are accumulating inventory. So to, to easily understand this, B minus 8 is the rate at which you are increasing this line, the, the, your inventory, and you are increasing at the rate of B minus A over T1, which means B minus A times T1 should be equal to h and because of uh, these two equations we will be able to get a formula that will relate h to q and that is equal to b minus a over b times q next t2 what do we know about t2 T2 is the time when we are only selling or consuming our inventory. And how much inventory are we consuming over the period T2? We are consuming H, which means this is H over the consumption rate of A or the dem demand rate. And because H is equal to this, therefore T2 can be uh, equal to B minus A over AB times Q. And because we have T1 and T2 in terms of Q already, so what is T, which is equal to T1 plus T2? This is equal to Q over B plus quantity B minus A over AB times Q. And this is equal to a, B, this is uh, A, Q, plus, well, quantity B minus A times Q is B, Q minus A, Q. We cancel A, Q. And then what we have here is B, Q over A, B. We cancel B. What we end up with is A, Q over A. So in the end, T is still Q over A, but H is equal to this t1 and t2 are equal to these two and therefore what we can do right now is to uh, write this total cost function in terms of a single variable and what is that total cost function equal to that's the total cost function in terms of q which is equal to well in the first place your k over t is still a k over q your c q over t is still a c 
your small h times one half times t times big H over t, we cancel t. What we have is h over 2, h over 2 times big H. But big H is equal to b minus a over b times q. Okay? So now, once we were able to get the total cost function per unit time for model number 3, we can now look for the optimal Q by getting the derivative. So we get the derivative with respect to Q. In this, in this case, this is a negative AK over Q. This is a constant. This gives us an H over 2 times B minus A over B. Oh, sorry. This has to be squared. And then we equate this to, to be equal to 0. What do we get? Uh, we transfer this to the right. Everything becomes positive. We move Q star, uh, Q squared up. We move 2B up. We move B minus A and H down. What we will get is a Q star to be equal to the plus minus of square root of 2AK over H square root of, sorry, the square root of b over b minus a. And because we are getting a q star that uh, which, which relates to the op optimal order quantity, therefore the negative root is extraneous. Okay? Now, uh, technically this is not yet done because we still need to get the second derivative. But we can eyeball the second derivative. If we derive this, this becomes positive. This becomes zero. And because this is positive, inputting the positive value to uh, uh, the second derivative, we will get that the second derivative is positive, which means this is a minimum point. Okay? And once you have Q star, which is equal to this, in the end, you will be able to get all the all the rest you will be able to get h star you will be able to get t1 star t2 star and eventually t star and of course your total cost star